Hi everyone and welcome back to NotFlow. Today is a pretty special day as we just passed a thousand subscribers and I'm very thankful to all of you guys for your support. So to celebrate a thousand subscribers on the channel, I am bringing you a new series on something that I've seen very rarely on YouTube. We are talking about cross simulation using crowd motion path operators and it will be my job to make it easy for you. So let's start. <music> In Houdini, I will start with the mockup by red tree. I will then change the animation to walks and turns. And as you can see, if you press play, it's walking on the spot. Although we don't really like these behaviors, we would like it to walk in the world, so we'll check in place animation. In this case, you see we have another problem. He's walking, but then he's stopping at frame 26. That's because the animation is finishing at frame 26, and we will loop that later. So for now, it's perfectly fine. Another problem that we have is that we cannot really scatter this character in our crowd because it's very dense. It has lots of points. So we need to convert this geometry into a special kind of packed primitives that can store some animation too that's called agent. In order to do that let's start by changing this name to walk and I want to select my node and then going into the crowd shelf tools and click on agent. It will ask me a name for this clip that I will name walk and I can change here the agent name to be human. I will then press OK and as you can see outside it created a node called human setup. If you go inside we can see the node that is responsible for the conversion from geometry to agent, the agent sub. If you visualize it you can see it looks almost the same although now we don't really have points but if you press W you can see you just have one single point over here. So in the end cross simulations are just particle simulations with an agent attached on top of them so the idea would be not to control the rig or the geometry but to control the point and then the rig and the geometry will follow. We are also adding some clips so I can press W to visualize the geometry again and over here we can see we are adding a walk clip. Again we have the problem that is not looping that's because Houdini thinks that this animation is long as our timeline. That's not the case so we control shift and click I will change this one to 26 because this particular animation loops after 26 frames. It starts to look correct, although as I told you the idea would be that this guy follows this point and because this point is not really moving, the animation is behaving weirdly. So in order to fix that, we don't want him to walk away from the point so we can convert it to in-place animation, but you'll see it's giving us an error. That's because it still needs something to move it forward and that would be our locomotion. We'll talk about locomotion a lot more later, but for now we need to give it the hips and from the hips it will understand how to move forward. Although it's not moving forward because we should apply this clip locomotion. We finally have our correct behavior. We can see our point and we can see the agent that is following these points playing the same animation in place on that point. And for now this is enough for us so I will name this one agent definition out and I want to delete all of this. They could be useful but for the scope of this tutorial we will create crowd motion paths so it's perfectly fine. So now that we have it before we proceed I would like to add another animation. So we can can duplicate this one and we can name it clap as I want to add a clapping animation. So I will change this one to stadium and I will change this one to clap one If we want actually to add an animation to a pre-existing setup, we can just click on add clip. Now you can see it's asking us for a animation. So I can click here, select my animation and press enter to confirm. And then we can name our animation clap. Let's press OK. And now inside we can say we have two animations. Very important if you're using lock motions, like in this case, is to convert any new clip to in-place animation. Otherwise it will not really work. And now as you can see, if you preview it, you have an animation like that. Now we can change the current clip back to walk. So our agent by default will walk and not really clap. And now we can start creating some crowd motion path nodes. I will create the crowd motion path SOP and by connecting it, you can see it's creating what are called motion paths. And this is just, you can imagine as a prediction of where the agent will be in the end of the timeline. So if you want to make the path shorter or longer, you can change this value to be, let's try something like 50. They will walk only until frame 50 and then they will stop. By default, this expression is actually taking care of reading the end value of your timeline. That's why even if you change the timeline to be 400 that would perfectly work and the path will get longer and I think that's sick. For now I will keep that to 240 and we can start our journey with the crowd motion path edit. There is a node that gives you an incredible amount of control on the path of the agent. As you can see I can go into the viewport and I can change my path to go wherever I want to. And my agent of course as you will expect is following that path. Now with one character is not 
that big of a deal. So I will create a crowd source and I will plug it in between my agent definition and my crowd motion path. I don't want to go in depth on this one again because this will be in another tutorial. So I will just for now randomize the clip time and I will put this one to one. That means that now some of these agents will start in different points of the same animation. And as you can see, they now look like they are playing slightly different animations, although it's always the same. And also I want to increase the number of agents. So here I will change this to 40. And as you can see, the crowd motion path edit it is, is not really adapting to previous changes, reset all changes, and then you will need to edit your paths again. I'm showing all these problems on purpose so you can be prepared, but if you want to influence more than one, you have another node for that. So for now, I will reset all changes on this one, and I'll create a crowd motion path follow. I will then connect the first two inputs here, and here I will need a curve. With a curve and visualizing this node, I can now define where the agents should move. And as you can see, they will follow my curve. So doing multiple curves, you can make them walk in different directions. So now if you press play, it's already working pretty nicely. So now that we have some curves to redirect their paths, and ideally you could change every single path manually with this one. Now I want to introduce some avoidance. So there is a node called crowd motion path avoid. This node is helpful to make the agents avoid themselves, and that's what it will do by default. You see it's adding like a bounding sphere around them, and you can also change how strong this will be, so with the neighbor distance. But we are interested in the third input, because here we can plug a toy, and I will create also a transform node, so we can move it. And now you can see, if I move my toy, the curves will try to avoid him. And that's a very visual and elegant way to are direct your crowd. For now, just to make it cooler, I will just make it face the crowd. And because it's generating like a lot of area around him for the avoidance, we can change these parameters into the crowd motion path avoid into the obstacle section, obstacle distance. So doing something like that, you can make them go closer to the object. And I think already like that looks pretty sick. Let's press play. And you can see we are creating some avoidance. So in to influence a change of animation, let's say from the walk to the clap, that we have imported, we will need a trigger. So let's create a crowd motion path trigger. Let's plug it in. And by now you can see it will change to the different animation after 50 frames because it's set to time. We want to change it to object distance. Now we can connect into the third input, our object. As we can see in orange, these are the paths where the engine will walk by and be influenced by this change. We can also make the radius a little bit bigger and we can continue with the crowd motion path transition. So here we can find our trigger and right now it's switching by default to a clip name called run, but we don't have it. We have a clip name called clap. And again, if now we press play, we should be able to see that when they get closer, they start sitting and clapping. I on purpose decided to choose this clapping animation, not because I like it like that, but because with the next node, we will choose to influence only the upper part of the agent with this behavior, while the lower part will continue to walk. And I think that's amazing. So in order to do that, we can create a crowd motion path layer. By visualizing it, I want to change only the upper part to clap, although we don't have a group for the upper part. Here you see it's asking for a trigger so we can start giving the trigger when they go inside of here. So let's go up and let me create an agent transform group over here, even before the crowd source. In order to select only the upper part of the body, first of all, we can name this group upper and then into the root transform, I want to find this spine to spine one. And if I show guide geometry and I press W, you can see it's selecting only the upper part. We don't want to use the transition. We want to transition thanks to this layer. So we can delete this one for now and into the layer we can now finally check the transform group to upper. And now if you check when they will get closer to our geometry that I will template here, they will start switching to the second animation only in the upper part of the body. How cool is that? The level of control that you can reach with this system is amazing. I've seen very few tutorials on this one. So if you're liking it so far, leave a like and subscribe as that will help a lot. And I'm preparing always new content for you guys. So I'm really happy if you are enjoying it so far. For the next stage, I mean, you could do a lot of stuff, but to end up talking about all the crowd motion path node, I will introduce the crowd motion path retime. It will retime the speed of, of your agents. So if you set that to two, your agents will go two times faster. And for now, I will leave it as default. And we can finish our crowd motion path network with the crowd motion path evaluate. This will take our motion paths and our agents and will give us back the agents. So let me create a simple merge. I will plug my crowd here. And I also want to see my rubber toy. And now before previewing all of this, I will also create a grid and I will give it a darker color. So something like this kind of gray and I will make the grid 
way bigger so we have some area for visualizing all of this plug it in and we're seeing everything together we can see we have two group of agents and they are avoiding reacting to the collision geometry they are avoiding each other and i think that's so cool give it a try i will be happy if you will experiment with this setup and you will let me know if you find something cool in the new videos we'll talk a little bit more about the classic workflows but again i wanted to make a new video on this one because again it's a pretty cool setup and i've seen very few tutorials around so i really really hope you enjoyed it with that said I will see you in the next one.